And John Lee has a phrase that's worth thinking about. It's called concentration work. We come to concentration to rest, but for the mind really to rest, to have a sense of belonging here in the present moment, fully inhabiting the present moment, it often takes some work. The factors that do the work are direct to thought and evaluation, keeping your mind directed to the breath and then evaluating how things are going as you try to settle down. Think of that image of the bathman that the Buddha uses when he talks about the first jhana, working the water through that pile of bath powder. Back in those days, they didn't have bars of soap, but they had a bath powder that you would mix water with and have kind of, kind of a paste or a dough-like substance that you would rub over your body. And the same as working water into a pile of flour to make the dough for bread. You have to knead very carefully, make sure that there are no dry spots, and make sure there are no places where the water is dripping out. Everything mixes together properly. In the same way the Buddha says, you get a sense of ease, well-being, rapture, and you let that spread through the body, and you work it through the body. It's like you're kneading it through the body. And if you don't do this work, the mind can't settle down properly. It may veer off and just leave the body entirely. And a lot of people like that. I mean, there's some people who go through childhood trauma, and they're pretty good at getting out of the body. But it's not a very stable state. You have to keep coming back, coming back to the issues in the body. If there's pain in some part of the body, how can you work around it? How can you get so the pain can be there, but it's not attacking you? In other words, you're not sucking it in. And it is possible when there's physical pain in the body for the mind to settle down in the body and yet not be pushed away by the pain. You learn to look at all the comfortable spots around the pain. There was that book they printed years ago called Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain, which they talked about how a good way to learn how to draw a sketch of somebody's face is not to focus on the eyes or the nose or the mouth or whatever because we tend to have preconceived notions of what those look like. They said to look at the spaces between them. What is the shape? Say, if you're looking at somebody's face, what's the shape in the area between the, ni <coughs> the nose and the eye, or between the nose and the lips, or the lips and the chin, or the eye and the eyebrow? In other words, you focus on all the parts of this face that you didn't focus on before, and that lets you see them more clearly. And it's a similar process here. There may be pain in the body, but Instead of getting sucked into the pain, you focus on everything around the pain. You find that there is a sense of well-being there, and you can tap into that and then start letting that spread around. If there are patterns of tension around the pain, think of that sense of ease moving through. Think of the breath as able to go through mountains. In other words, go through the solid parts or solid-seeming parts of the pain realizing they're not so solid as they may have originally seemed. They're a lot more porous. And as you're working through the body in this way, sometimes you'll find old issues come up, because a lot of times memories get locked into some part of the body. And a sudden memory of something happening in your childhood will come up. One time I was working on chronic pain I had in my foot. And all of a sudden, there was a release, and I had this sudden memory of when I was six years old, and it jumped out of the second story of our barn and onto a pile of hay, and it turned out there was a nail in the hay. I had been carrying around the somatic memory of that since I was six, and working through the tension around there allowed it to release. Now, sometimes it's not a physical trauma, sometimes it's a mental trauma that you're going to have. And so you have to be prepared that there will be things coming up in the meditation, old memories that you'd rather not have to remember. But if you have a sense of stability in the rest of the body and a sense of stability in your mind, you can allow them to come and wash over you and then pass by, be gone. So it takes work to settle down in the body, because there's not just physical pain here, and there's not just the issue of distraction. Sometimes some old things are buried in here. But 
you're given the tools to work with them. Tools not only in the concentration, but also the teachings on karma. When you come up against something that's unpleasant from the past, you have to remind yourself, okay, there was some karma involved. You don't have to go into all the details, but just say that there must have been some karmic process going on there. You learn to accept it, and it's a lot easier to handle that way. And as you work through these things, then you find the mind can settle down more firmly in the present moment and really inhabit the body. In this way, you're more solidly here, and there's also protection that comes from this. As all the breath energies in the body work together, it helps you repel the energies of other people. There was a woman who came to meditate at the monastery one time. A friend of hers was working in the kitchen, and she had told Ajahn Fung that this other friend, the woman who was coming, had had a chronic problem in her meditation, that every time she sat down to meditate, she started shaking. And sure enough, she came to the monastery, and we were sitting as a group, and she started shaking. And Ajahn Fung had a student, another student who was quite psychic, and he said, check her out, see what's going on. And so the student did, and she saw these two beings standing behind the woman, shaking her. So she immediately, in her vision, went up to them and said, Hey, stop doing that. Why are you harassing her like this? And they turned on her, scared her so much that she had to go running out and threw up outside. And came, in and came back in and reported to Chan Fung what she had seen. And he said, You fool. You've got to protect yourself before you deal with things like this. And the way he said to protect herself was to fill her body with a sense of light, which goes with the breath. And then spread lots of goodwill to the beings, and then you can talk to them. And so she did, and she found out that the beings had been this woman's parents in a previous lifetime, and the woman had killed them. And they didn't like the idea that she was going to get away without having repaid the debt they felt that she had to her. The corollary to the story was that she, the, the student asked her, asked these beings, okay, what could she do to pay off the debt. And they said, build a Buddha image and dedicate it to us. Now the problem is we were building a Buddha image at the time. So when the student came to see John Fuang, he said, you can't say this, anything to her about this. It sounds like you're, you're trying to get money for our image. So you just have to leave, it, leave the case be. Maybe some day of her own accord she'll build a Buddha image. And sure enough, two years later she did, and the shaking stopped. But the takeaway that I was saying, you're dealing with obstreperous spirits, and obstreperous spirits include human beings. One, you've got to fill your body with good breath awareness, really inhabit your body, and then protect yourself also with goodwill. Goodwill in all directions to all beings. But for this to work, you've got to work through the issues you've got in settling down in the body. So if you find you have these issues, this is work that's well worth the effort. Getting so that you're familiar with different parts of the body that you've cut off for one reason or another. And that you're able to sit through areas. If there's a chronic pain in some part of the body, how do you breathe around it? How do you breathe through it? How do you get your awareness around it? So that the way you feel you inhabit the body, you, you feel that this is your space in the sense that you're not going to let the pain push you out. Now, of course, there's a paradox here. On the one hand, we don't want to lay claim to the body as us or ours, but before you can really let go of it, you've got to fully inhabit it. Make use of this space, because only if you can fully inhabit this space can you be fully at ease with your own mind, and that's when the mind can really settle down. And when you've done that concentration work, then there comes a point where you've done as much Direct a thought and evaluation as you can. You've got the best results you can. That's when you say, I'm going to sit with whatever's there. Then you can move in. And then it's just simply a process of maintaining what you've got. And the concentration gets more and more subtle. The fact that the mind is still means the brain is using less oxygen. And so the need to breathe gets more and more refined, more and more gentle until it can stop. 
And the first time this happens, it'll be a little scary. You realize, yeah, my breathing stopped. You can't remember how long it was since you took your last breath. But don't get scared. If the body needs to breathe, it will breathe. You just make sure that everything in the body is connected. All the breath energy channels are connected. And the oxygen exchange to the skin will be enough to keep you going. It's only a when you've reached this state, that the mind can go safely into the more formless states of concentration. Because you've learned how to maintain one perception in mind, the perception of the breath, the perception of the whole body, and keep it in mind. Then allow your awareness to expand. at the same time. And this skill is what allows you to go solidly into the formless states, where the sense of the body disappears. You're sitting here. You haven't gone anywhere else. And if you need to have the body, you can form it. It's like that old science fiction story they had about teleporting people to the moon. They were working on this process, the technology of teleportation, and according to the story, they were still had to iron out some bugs. The main bug was that the bones were slower than everything else. So if, say if you sent a cat or a rabbit up to the moon, it would pour out as this liquid of body without the bones. And then you'd have this bowl full of cat until the bones arrived. And if the cat, some, before the bones came and needed something, it would you know, it suddenly would show its mouth and it could form itself into a mouth for a while. Okay, and sometimes they even got up and kind of jumped around in a liquid kind of way. And it's the same as you're coming out of the formless states. And when, when you realize you need the body for something, you have a body again. It seems to have dispersed, dissolved in the meantime, but then when the time comes when you need it, everything will come back together again. You don't have to worry. Now, this is different from leaving the body in the sense of getting outside the body. You don't want to do that because it's dangerous. You're leaving your body unprotected, and you're unprotected outside. But if you're here, right where the body is, but there's no sense of the body, you're still perfectly safe. But to get to this formal state, you've got to do the concentration work, work through the issues in the body that are connected with the mind. So you can have it in your body fully. A sense of well-being that comes and makes it a lot easier to spread goodwill to all the obstreperous beings out there and all the obstreperous people you're going to encounter. And it's when you've done the work, that's when you can rest. And John Lee talks about the formless states as being like someone who's done a job and now they're living off their pension. Or as being in, in the form states of jhana, that's like continuing to work and getting your salary and enjoying it at the same time. So this is where the real work is done. And this is how the work keeps paying, with this sense of well-being, a sense of really belonging here. And as the mind is allowed to spread out, it feels very spacious. It becomes a good place to be. <laughs>